Donald Trump has been indicted again. And frankly, probably not for the last time. But from the outset, I got to say that this is far more complicated and for Trump a dangerous case than that ridiculous indictment DA Alvin Bragg stitched together in New York. Here in Florida, Trump is facing charges under the Espionage Act, which may be an overreach on the part of prosecutors, but given the vagaries of the American legal system at the moment, it's also potentially nuclear for the former president. And it also has to be said that while the charges stem from what can only be described as a get Trump witch hunt, Trump, knowing that he is such a target, absolutely put himself in the frame for this one. Fact is, he had plenty of chances to cut deals with the National Archives over these documents, but he didn't, and instead got all cagey about it. So here we are. But let's put that to one side for a moment, because there is another greater truth here, and that is this. Donald Trump, for all of his flaws, is blessed by his enemies who became so overwrought with rage whenever the terrible orange man's name is mentioned that they make stupid mistakes in their attempts to get the man. They are like wily e. Coyote in the old cartoons, utterly convinced of their genius and intellectual superiority. While Trump is a bit like the Roadrunner, he keeps getting away with it in spite of the laws of gravity, be they physical, legal, or political. Which is why, when word of the indictment came down, I asked myself two questions. One, why do the people who claim to be the most opposed to Donald Trump returning to the White House keep doing things that make it more likely he gets there? And two, why do those who claim that Trump is the greatest threat to the American system keep doing things that have more than a little of the flavor of the banana republic about them, like hauling a de facto opposition leader into court on criminal charges. I mean, seriously, we saw from the last indictment that running a legal witch hunt on Trump over documents or hush money or whatever, things that Democrats like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden could all be credibly accused of, but skate on, just pushes more people into the Trump camp because they see this for the stitch up it is. And it is a stitch up. I mean, there's a small handful of documents that are really at issue in this Florida case, 103 in total. By comparison, Hillary Clinton deleted 30,000 emails and exposed thousands more to foreign hackers. Yet prosecutors released photos of stacks and stacks of archive boxes at Mar-a-Lago, the clear implication being that they were all stuffed with nuclear secrets and files about UFOs and maybe, I don't know, the colonel's secret recipe. Here's Joe Biden. We just have to demonstrate that he will not take power um, by, uh, if, we, uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he, uh, under the legitimate efforts of uh, our Constitution, does not become the next president again. Now, look, I'll sit down and diagram that sentence someday. But you get the idea. For people like Joe Biden and Democrats on the left, Trump is an existential threat, and he must be stopped. And people who think that he is an existential threat see his existence as a threat. That, and not because of the documents, is why they have deployed the Espionage Act against him. According to the Espionage Act, it is a crime to act against the interests of the United States of America. It's the same law that was used correctly against Julius and Ethel Rosenberg for sharing atomic secrets with the Soviets, and to charge Robert Hansen, one of the worst spies in history, who sold his country out for a Rolex watch and $600,000, who died fittingly in his prison cell last week. MSNBC's resident conspiracy theorist Rachel Maddow, I know, I know, but stopped clocks and all that, they can be right belled the cat on what's going on the other day. You have to wonder if the Justice Department is considering whether there is some political solution to this criminal problem, whether part of the issue here is not just that Trump has committed crimes, but that Trump has committed crimes and plans on being back in the White House. Do they consider, as part of a potential plea offer, 
something that would prescribe him, proscribe him from, from, from running for office again. So everybody's admitting this is a political prosecution, but is it good strategy? I mean, think about it. Did that first indictment in New York hurt Trump politically? Hell, has his second? In the polls, he's still beating Ron DeSantis by a two to one margin for the nomination in key states. And he's up two points nationally over Biden in the general election. Though, of course, it's the state by state races that really counts and we know anything can happen. But this may be why the media reacts the way it does. Here's CNN's Jake Tapper absolutely losing it when his control room played video of Trump stopping in a Cuban restaurant after his indictment. Whatever this spectacle is that's unfolding before us, let's remember what this case is about. Let's remember what this indictment charges. Again, Donald Trump is charged with a series of federal felonies for mishandling the most sensitive government documents that we have and for obstruction of justice, along with Walt Nauta, who is charged with intentionally setting up lies to the grand jury, to the FBI. Any way you look at this, and again, despite whatever may be going on in that restaurant, this case isn't going to be settled legally in a cafe. It's going to be settled in the court based on the, the facts and law. The folks in the control room, I don't need to see any more of that. He, this, he's trying to turn this in. He's trying to turn it into a spectacle, into a campaign ad. That's enough of that. We've seen it already. And of course, Tapper wasn't the only one. But for Trump, the problem is his greatest opponent right now isn't Jake Tapper and the Beltway talking head gang. It's Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, who acts for Attorney General Merrick Garland, who answers to President Joe Biden. See the problem?